See, when you're in a place of obedience, you have to move when God say move. And you have to follow the instructions and just to the teeth. Because there were folks after Elijah. Had he had stayed another day to camp out. Well, God, I'm just a little tired today. I don't want to move today. The enemy would have caught him. Yes. God told him to move with haste. Yes. Get up Get out of here. Out. Go. Sometimes we'll find ourselves, we'll be wondering and we're, we're wondering why we're going through stuff because we didn't follow the instructions to the T. Yes. We treat God just like a GPS. Ah. Jesus. So God was showing me an illustration. Y'all know how it is when we put instructions in the GPS and we want the GPS to tell us where we're going. And sometimes the issue is that sometimes we have been to the place, so we have that old memory in the back of our head. Yes. Right, right. Yes. I know where I'm about to go. Yes. But as soon as we put it in there, but we can't quite remember the full direction. Mm -hmm. So we try to go ahead and we ask the GPS to help us, for, you know, put it in our remembrance. And we're driving down the street. And the GPS finds you, uh, uh, will find you, we'll, we'll be found in somewhere that's not familiar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when it's not familiar, yeah. Yeah. then what we'll do is we'll start taking over. Yeah. We'll say, nah, I ain't supposed way. to go here because I don't remember coming down this street. Yeah. So what we do is we'll shift the directions yeah. of the GPS to fit what we know. Yes, yes, yes. God said that's how we do him. Yes. Wow. Oh we, we, we rearrange the directions mm. to fit us. Because it, it's familiar. Mm -hmm. We go to the familiar things and we go to the familiar places. So when we're looking for God to lead us and to direct us, we try to go to the familiar thing. And, the, and, and God is a God. He said, I'll do the foolish things to come down the wow. yes. But we try to look for some familiar stuff. Mm -hmm. So with the GPS thing, he said, he said, you start changing the directions. And next thing you know it, you done ran into traffic. You done ran into an accident. Mm -hmm. Or you done ran into some detours. Mm -hmm. And the detours have caused you to delay yes. your arrival to where you need to go. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, you don't hear me today. Yes. Because you have decided to alter the directions of God and alter the directions of the GPS. Yes. He said, just like the GPS, he said, check this out. He said, the GPS gets its information from a pilot. Ah, yes. my yes. God, yes. my God. Yes. It needs 
needs all of its ingredients. All right. So you have to do what? Follow, follow the instructions. instructions. <laughs> you have to follow the instructions. Yes. So Elijah had to follow the instructions of God. Yes. He took him to a place of safety. Yes. Elijah could have even said, well, I'm going to go just to my cousin's house. She, she just right around the corner. Mm -hmm. But God didn't send him in. That's right. He sent him into a place of a wilderness place. Yes. When he looked after him, you got to catch it. He took care of Elijah. Yes. I got you. No, everybody not around. Your family not here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that would happen to you when God has you in a place of obedience. Yep. When he has you in a place where it's just you and him, yep. everybody yep. ain't going to yep. be there. Yes. I'm going to no. sit you in a place where I can talk to you. Yes. I'm going to yep. sit you in a place where I can give you instructions. Yes. I'm going to sit you in a place Come where on. it's just me and yes. it's just you. Yes. Come on. Yes. But I need you to get there. Elijah was willing to go wherever yes. God told him. He did not veer from the instructions. Yes. He said, yes. hurry yes. and go right there. Yeah. Yeah. And I got you. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Amen. Three, mm -hmm. obedience requires following oh, the instructions. Yeah. All right. All right. Come on now. Do we look at the scripture? Four, obedience will always keep you sustained. Yes. It will keep you sustained. Watching the scripture. In the ninth verse, he said, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zion, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a will Not to enough. sustain thee. Mm -hmm. See, when, when you're doing what God says, come on, come on. Preparation will already be made for you. Wow. you See that? Yeah. Watch yeah. out. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. See, when we're in a place of obedience, mm -hmm. you'll be sustained. <laughs> you won't have to worry about what's going to happen. What? Obedience will cause preparation to be made for your next assignment. See now? Come on. See, this is his next assignment. Mm -hmm. Now I need you to get over here and go to Zerubbabel. And it didn't make any sense. And, but he yet did not question God. Yeah. You know why it didn't make sense? One, Jezebel was the hometown of Jezebel. <laughs> Come on. Why are you sending me here? Okay. Huh. It was the center of Baal worship. Yep. See, God will do, like I said earlier, He'll use the foolish things to come out of my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you sending me to a widow in a barren place? Everything around them come is on. dying. Yeah. But yet God said, I need you to go. Yeah. I need you to go here. See, sometimes when God is leading you in a place where your assignment is at, you may not understand why he's taking you there. You may not understand why you have to be the one to go. You may you can't figure it out. Well, God, that don't make no sense. This is when you shut your mouth and just obey God. Yeah. He never went back and forth with God. And that's what gets us in, in trouble. We sit there and we have this conversation with God like God doesn't know. He knew the assignment. Because the assignment had purpose tied to it. It was something on there, over there in Zarephath that had to happen. Yes. And even if you don't see it, yes. God. Yes. Yes. He's the eye of the sky, remember? That's right. He sees it. He knows. He knows what needs to happen. And it's not about you. It's about his glory. Yes. This story, when it shifts, See, obedience, that brings me to the next part. Your obedience isn't always about you. All right. See them? Mm -hmm. Elijah's obedience had nothing to do with him at this point. Yes, yes. I'm sending you to a widow woman. Not only is she just a widow woman, you have to understand she's in a city that don't believe in God. Mm -hmm. They don't worship God. They worship him. So his assignment was to an unbeliever. Mm. 
See, you don't know what God is sending you to. But all you have to do is just obey him. See, our assignment, see, our obedience, like I say, isn't always about us. Come when on. we read the 10th verse, it says, So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread. Mm -hmm. This woman here planning her own funeral. Mm -hmm. Planning her own funeral. And here's Elijah coming up and, and Elijah has to speak to her. And God is about to use Elijah. And this is brings me to chapter the, um, the sixth point. Your obedience will position you to be used of, used for God's glory. Mm -hmm. Obedience will position you to be used for God's glory. Here was the opportunity he had to minister to an unbeliever about the God that he served. Here was the opportunity that Elijah had to speak life into a dead situation. She had already had on her grave clothes. Yeah. Yeah, she, nice. she said, I'm collecting these sticks, man of God, because I'm going to eat what I have, and I'm going to die. Do you understand that? See, when you obey God, it'll push you into position come on, come on. that you become the witness you become the instrument. You become the vessel that yes, God yes, uses yes. for his glory. Amen. Amen. Now, Elijah could have took that as that. Mm -hmm. But if you go on, he, he goes on to say, let's read. As she was going to fetch it, he calls to her and says, bring me, I pray, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, as the Lord liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel. And a little oil, that's all I got. I'm gathering these two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we will may eat it and die. And watch Elijah's response. Mm -hmm. And Elijah said to her, fear not. Mm -hmm. I just want to stop right there. Fear not. Fear not. <laughs> See, uh, Elijah had to take authority. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. Over the spirit of fear that was presented there. Come on, yeah. come on. He said, fear not. not. Don't be afraid. See, that's what happens with us when we walk in a place of obedience. We can speak to things. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. We can shift the atmosphere. We can take authority over the matter. See, Elijah refused to accept death uh -huh. when he knew he knew the God of life. Jesus. He refused to accept her death sentence. Mm. Come on. So he spoke into her. He said, fear not. Go do as thou hast said. Make me thee a little cake first and bring it unto me. And after, make thee and your son. See, now the obedience shifts from Elijah uh -huh. to the woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that brings me to the seventh point. Your obedience requires faith. <laughs> what because faith say? and obedience walk hand in hand. This was a unbeliever having to believe in a God that she didn't serve to believe that he would do what he said he would do. Yeah. In that moment, her obedience was, was life and death. Mm. If she chose not to obey the prophet, we would have been reading about a funeral mm -hmm. that day. Mm -hmm. But see, this is what God is saying. When I am telling you to do something, it can be life or death. Yes. Yes. Your decision may cause you your life. Mm -hmm. yes. So you need to make sure when you hear the voice of God that you do as he said. He's saying, obey me in this season. Mm -hmm. It's life or death. Had she had just in that moment thought just about herself, but before she could even do anything, the prophet took authority over the matter and said, don't fear. Yes. Don't be afraid. I need you to hear me, woman of God. I need you to hear me now. 
now, I need you to go bake this cake for me. Mm. You can't operate in fear uh -huh. when you walk in, in obedience. Mm. Let me say that again. Mm. You cannot operate in fear when you're walking in obedience. Mm -hmm. She made up her mind. Listen to this. This is an unbeliever that we're dealing with. And here we are, the church. Jesus. This unbeliever <laughs> grab hold to the word the of that the man said. Yeah. <laughs> if you just give me a piece of your cake that you're about to bake, mm -hmm. you will live ah, and not die. And not die. Okay. In that moment, she had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. She had to make a decision. See, in a place of obedience, you have to make a, a, a decision. Will you live or will I die? My God. See, obedience brings life. Okay. Disobedience, the scripture says, the wages of sin is yeah. death. And some of us are dying spiritually because we refuse to obey God. My God. But here this is, this unbeliever who don't even believe in the God that Elijah serves yeah. steps out on faith ah. and says, here is my cake, sir. Mm. Have the first piece. But read the story. In the beginning, she said, I don't even have enough for a cake. Yeah. Come on. I don't even have enough for the cake. Yeah. But because she made up her mind that she was going to obey God, yeah. the
This woman had a plan to die. <laughs> she had to pull out her little dress. Me and my baby, we gonna eat this and die. I got a little ahead of myself, but I can't go. I got to release that. Obedience will cause you to change your plan. Go to the 15th verse. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. My God, my God. My when you obey God, those little plans you done got written out or what you want to do and what you're going to do. When you walk in a place of obedience, it'll cause you to throw your plans down yeah. and say, God, whatever you say, do, yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. Because my last and final one, obedience will bring you to a place of promise. Yes, See, if you're willing to change your plan, it'll take you where you're supposed to go. Yeah. And that's what happened to the woman. If you look and said in the 15th verse at the end, she and he and her house did eat many days. When we obey God. Amen. When we obey God, yeah. it'll cause you to change your plan. Yeah. Yeah. Your plans become secretary, secondary yeah. to him. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus. God, Jesus. this is what I wanted to do. My God, my God, my God. I've been God. desiring this and this. I've been planning this for years, God. But yet when the voice of God speaks, hmm. see that? You have to make a decision. Yes, 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 yes. yes. We, we quick to say this, that God I did, for God I died. Nah. If we live for God, like we say we do, if we live for God like we say we do, we have to obey him. Yeah. Even when even when it takes away something yeah. that we love so much. Yeah. Yes. God, I love this job. I've been on this job and I, I've been here for years and it's been blessing me. And then God said, it's time to move. Mm. But God, I know all these people. And um, they couldn't give me a raise. And, and then they were talking about an increase. But it's time to move. It's time to move. See, this is where our flesh, we, we start having conversations yeah. back and forth. Mm. Obedience. It fell. Obedience, God is telling me to tell you. He said, it doesn't require any talk. No back and forth talk. Just you know how it is with your children. Let me okay, Just thank you, Holy yeah. Spirit. Yeah, okay. With your kids. Go and pick up your toys. My hmm. mom's still playing with it. But they got all this to say. Old school. Come on with it. Come on with it. It's a different generation. It's, a, it's a different generation. My kids are laughing at me because I always tell them this. I said, y'all are different than me. I'm trying to tell you that. Whole yes, God. With other crazy people. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. They did you die. They didn't even know what DCF was. They you know, mentioned yeah. something crazy like Say it. they would pack your guy if they tell you go stay. Go and stay. Yeah. 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 When they spoke one time. That's wow. it. That's it. And some of them didn't have to speak. Get a look. Get a look. The instructions were yeah. given one time. Oh, one I time. Ooh. You don't hesitate. Yeah. No. You don't procrastinate. Yeah. That's obedience. Yeah. And this is what he's saying. Yeah. Stop hesitating. Yeah. Procrastinating. Yeah. Stop talking back and forth to me. Yeah. Stop telling me what you think and what you feel. Yeah. I just told you to do something. I need you to, to do, do it. it. Yeah. yeah. Nike had the best. Some Christians should have grabbed hold of that. Just do it. Yes, just do it. it. Word, word, and the world took it and became millionaires off of that. Just do it. Just do it. Just this way Mary told them at the wedding. Mm. Whatever, Whatever he, he said, said to do. do, do, do it. It. That's what she said. Just do it. Don't question him. If he's if he telling you to go get a barrel of water, go get the water. Go just the do water. it. Yeah. This is the season that we're in. We're in the just do it season of obedience. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever God is saying to you, just do it. We got your time. He said, I'm sorry.
Yeah. It saved her life. Yeah. And it can save her life. It saved her family's life. Yeah. Some of the things that God is doing yeah. is going to cause it not just to save you, but you and your house yeah. can be saved because of your obedience. Yeah. But you sit here like a little child going back and forth with God, and God said, I'm sick of it. Obey me. Just obey me. We treating God like some of these kids treat their earthly parents. Mm, well, Disrespectful. Talking well, back. Well. You know we don't talk back. See that? And that's what God is saying. Stop talking no, back to me. Stop. And just do what I say. Damn Obey him. Stop talking in your head to all those voices. Mm. Because they're bringing about a confusion. Yes, yes. Making you question and making you doubt. Yes. If you move the first time when he told you to move, yes. it would have just been done. Yes. You walk away and believe God. Yes. Right. Look what she did. She just told him. What? But he said, but. He said, go do everything you said. But. But. But her verses, everything else that come by that, right. that came before it. He said, but give me my cake. I'm just yeah. this give me what I asked for. Yeah, what I asked for. That's all. Yes. Look at this yes. scripture. There was no more conversation from her. Yeah. She didn't say nothing else. Yeah. She made up in her mind, I will obey. Yes. Yeah. She just went, baked a cake. Yeah. Here, sir. Here's a cake. Mm -hmm. He just asked, well, never enough for a cake. Mm. See, when you just do it yeah. and not hesitate, in your hesitation, in your procrastination, that gives the enemy an opportunity to come in oh, and start Lord. talking yeah. to you yeah. and start questioning it and yeah. start bringing fear and start bringing doubt. Yeah. After he gave the instructions, yeah. he told her to do all the other stuff, but just bring me a cake. No cake. more conversation was between the two. I need you to catch that. He did. There was no more talking. Mm -hmm. And that's what God is saying. Stop the talking mm -hmm. and just do what I say do. Mm -hmm. You have to move when I say move. Mm -hmm. If I say be still, be still. If I say go left, go left. If I say go right, go right. Yes. Don't question my judgment or my yeah. authority. That's what we do when we get in these conversations. We are questioning your authority. Yes, yes. And back in the day, they didn't let you question their authority. No, sir. I'm your mama. Okay. They gave that known. They didn't need a tattoo. And with all y'all names on it, they okay. tell you I was your mama. Okay. They stood with their authority. Mm -hmm. And back then, there was a fear. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Come on talk about yeah. it. Right, thank you. Yeah. Talk about it. Yeah. My grandmother didn't put a fear of, she didn't want me to be afraid of her. Right. But she wanted me to be afraid of the God that she yeah. served. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She used to always say that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what God would do to a child of disobedience? Mm -hmm. It was never about her, fearing her. I never feared my grandmother. But I feared the God that was in her. Because yes. she made sure you knew that she was a woman of God. Yes. And she stood firm on her authority. Mm. And that's what God is saying. I am God. I shut up the whole heaven. Mm. I shut up the whole heaven for three years. They they by lost all of their agriculture, the cows dying mm. everywhere. Yeah. Everything was gone. Mm. So I can prove to them who I was. Yeah. And here you still question me when I'm telling you to do something that will save your life. Oh my God. Man. Obey God, say Obey God, people of God. If you out there on Facebook, I don't care where you're at in your walk. But if you don't know Jesus, you need to get to know him. Mm. So you can understand what I'm saying about obeying him. Because not to know him is you're in a place of disobedience. Wow. So the first place of obedience for you is to come to know him in the pardon of your sins. Mm -hmm. 
That's the first step. That's our first work. Repent. It's to repent. He tells us that. Repent. Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus is coming. Yes. We forget to say that, but I want to continue to say it as I stand up here. Jesus is coming. And he's coming soon. Yes. And if you don't know him in a pardon of your sin, you need to know him as quickly as possible. You need to get to know him. Amen. Because Jesus is coming. Yes. And it's a time and this is an hour that we let other folks know. Mm. Jesus is coming. Yes. I don't care where they at. It's not going to come. I told you your obedience is not going to come with popularity. Yes. So when he tells you to go tell your family members to get their life in order, they may not invite you to the family barbecue. But it's okay. That's right. You obey God. Yes. They may not call you for the family function. See but it's okay. Yes. I obey God. Yes. When he tell you to go talk to your co-worker, they may talk about you at the water cooler and say all things about you. It's okay. It's okay. You obey God. Yes. It's not about popularity. Nowhere in the Bible were the prophets or the apostles or the disciples were popular. They were out to kill these folks because they keep they kept preaching a gospel. So don't expect a platform where people are gonna love and like you. Just obey God. God. Yes. Amen. That's where we're at in the season. We have to do what God has called us to do. Yeah. So it's our time to go out there and compel them to come. We have to obey God. Well, thank you. For this time, God is faithful in all things. Amen. If I say anything else, it would be simply obey God. Amen. Obey God. Don't be afraid of what you lose. Don't be afraid of who don't like you. Mm. He's a God that will sustain you. Yes. He's a God that will reward your obedience. Yes. But you have to obey him. Mm. And if you're on Facebook, and you don't know Jesus in your partner of your sin. We don't want to close without giving you the opportunity to accept him and to be ingrained into this family. You can, you two, like us, we were all adopted uh -huh. into a family of royalty. Oh, yes. And all it takes is for you to confess your faults and to accept him as Lord and Savior and to admit that he is who he says that he is. Yes. That he died for your sins. Yes. That he rose and he got up. And that's all it takes. If you just follow me or, or repeat these words, Father, forgive me. I'm a sinner. And today I ask you to come into my heart and to be Lord and Savior over me. You told me to confess my faults and I confess my faults, God. I confess that I am a sinner. But you said you will be just and you'll be faithful to forgive me for all of my sins. Amen. So, Father God, I thank you for forgiving me. Yes. But I do confess that you are Lord. Yes. I confess that your son died for me, yes. was crucified, was buried, and he rose from the dead just for me. So that I might have a right to the tree of life. Yes. And I take hold of the promise that you have given, God, yes. to those that confess, God, that you said that I will be saved. And today I say as the prophet God, you are saved. Thank you, God. And we thank you, God, for those who repeated that prayer and those who have decided that they want to receive you and glory to you. We celebrate their entry into the family, God. And we pray, Father God, that you will help them, Father God, to be sustained, sustained God. Sustained in their walk, God. Sustained, God, and, and, and who they are in you, God. We pray, Father God, that you would send them to a place that would continue to feed them, God. And I pray, Father God, for those who heard this word, that the enemy won't come in and swift it like wheat. But they will marinate this word in their hearts, God. And they will not, God, continue to be a, a person or a child of disobedience, but a child of obedience and just yes. obey you. Yes. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would touch families, God. Yes. Those who may be grieving in this season, God. Those that this disease and this plague have touched, God, we pray for strength in the name of Jesus, God. We pray, Father God, that you will begin to help us, God. Give us discerning eyes and give us 
um, listening ears to hear your yes, voice so that we yes, can God. obey your call in the name yes, of Jesus. God. Yes, God. We pray, Father God, for the church, God. Yes. We ask that you help us. We ask that you give us mercy, yes, God, God, as we get ourselves aligned to the promises and aligned to what yes, you have God. told us to do, God. So we repent even as the church, God. Yes. As we come back and align with your great commission, yes, God. God. You told us to go ye therefore into all the world yes. and to preach this gospel, yes. God. Yes. As we get aligned back, God, into you, God, yes. and leaving the platform of popularity, God, yes. and, and yes. social yes. media, yes. God. Yes. But we get into the hedges and the highways, God, yes. and compel those to come, God. Yes. Because you are a soon coming king, God. Yes. God. So forgive us, God, if we left the assignment. Yes, but as we get realigned, God, show us, God. Yes. Show us our assignment. Show us those, God, that we need to touch and those that we need to reach, God. And give us the boldness of the Holy Ghost yes. to yes. say what you say to say, God. And not, God, to bend or bow, God, or to buckle down, God, or to be in fear, God. But the boldness of the Holy Ghost to speak that which you're calling us to do. Yes, thank we thank you for your word and we thank you what you have said and what you have done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. For those of you on Facebook, we want to thank you for joining us um, today and, and every Sunday here at 11 o'clock. We thank you for your presence. We ask if you want to give, if you go to our website, we have our giving um, options on our website. And we ask that if you desire to give a seed, um, just go there, go to our cash app. It's our dollar sign RFI3, RFIM3. Um, if you can go there. But we want to thank you again for joining us. And God bless you. We'll see you next week. Amen.